Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's session. Uh, we're doing Media Composer. It's all about the pain effect, volume two. So we're excited about today's session, um, and we're so happy to have with us Mary Ann again for today's session. Um, as all of you know that are following us on Zoom, your session is being recorded and the audio is muted. We are also streaming to social feeds, so let us know where you're watching us from. And if you have questions or comments, you can also post on there and we can get those over to Mary Ann as well. The recorded sessions will be posted back to avid.com. So as most of you know, Mary Ann Post is one of our amazing avid master instructors and she's got another session with the paint effect today since it was so popular uh, a few weeks ago. So Marianne, I know as usual, we have a lot to cover in a short time, so I will hand it your way. All right, thanks, Don. Hi, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. And yes, this is part two of working with a pain effect. And the first session, we talked about the nuts and bolts, how to draw that kind of thing and get the most out of the actual tools. So if you missed that, you wanna check that out because uh, I'll do a little bit of that, but mostly we're gonna focus on specific examples. And I have several that I'm hoping to get through. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So you guys can all see Media Composer. Example one is an example I actually hadn't planned on showing, but someone asked about it in the last session, which is why it's always great to ask questions. You never know. You're question may end up being an example in a future session. And that is using the magic mask in pain effect. And the reason I don't use it much is because it's very specific as far as when it works. It's kind of like in a way like a chroma key. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Um, I'm gonna go into the effects workspace here and effects mode. I've got some hotkeys set up today to get me into the effects workspace and edit workspace that just saves some time. Um, and then I'm gonna apply the paint effect. It's in the image category. So uh, I wanna change the color of this sky. This is kind of this dystopian type scene. And so there's a lot to cut out here. Plus there's a guy running through the screen. So, um, I'm going to give Magic Mask a try for this. And I'm going to just grab my rectangle tool. I'm just going to draw a rectangle across the whole scene. Okay. Now, notice when I draw my rectangle that magically it stays within the film mask. And that is not the pain effect saying, oh, look, I recognize a uh, film mask. That's actually because I turned on, so I can be sloppy. Um, I turned on target mask and I have a black mask set up. And you can uh, set up your mask margins through settings. Okay, so uh, just want to at least point that out. Okay, so I have to have a shape to use magic mask because the parameters will not be available without a shape that's selected. Uh, so to sample the screen, I need to be able to see it. So I'm just gonna come up to my mode here, twirl it down, that we're gonna spend a lot of time in mode. And I'm going to just take the opacity down, okay? So I have my shape selected and now I can sample. So the idea is it's gonna key out or make changes actually more accurately to whatever color you sample. Kind of like chroma key keys out a sample color. This makes adjustments to the areas of the screen that have a sample color. So I'm gonna click this red box, which is the color swatch, and then I'm gonna sample on the screen. So you can see that box, hopefully, uh, change to a different color. Um, so then if I bring my opacity back up, you'll see that part, I can see parts of the image is not just solid. So any area of the screen that shares this sample color will be affected by the red solid or whatever other adjustments I make. So I can come in and make further changes. So you may have to come in and tweak like your saturation, luminance, and, and gain uh, to get exactly what you want. Um, so yeah, so it does cut out pretty good. Uh, there are also like a softness parameter. The softness parameter is supposed to soften the key areas. If you soften too much, you're gonna bring in more detail. But depending on what you're going for, like if I kind of wanted a red glow, totally change this to a different world, this could work. Um, otherwise you just kind of keep playing with it. And if I have time, I have another tip that can help me um, get rid of this area, but that's it. The workflow is 
sample your color, tweak the hue, saturation, luminance, gain, softness, all those parameters to tweak what's getting uh, affected. And then you can make whatever changes you want. So another part of this, I could change the mode. Right now, solid color is the default mode. And if I just want to change the color of the sky, maybe the world's not red. Maybe it's more magenta or weird blue or green. So you can totally change those colors and change the opacity, change the saturation. Um, and that. So the more subtle the adjustments you need to make, the more likely it will blend in as well, um, because it's probably hard to see on social, but the you could definitely kind of see the edges. Uh, it reminds me of kind of a classic chroma key in that sense. Uh, let's take a look at a couple other modes while we're here. Um, there's a ton of these, and some of these are classic if you work in like the Adobe space and you work with mode, blend modes. Some of these are similar to that. They borrow color information to make changes. So I just chose Colorize, which is using the color I chose um, in addition to other uh, options like that. So it's using this color. You can use like saturation uh, to achieve an effect. Um, and that kind of thing, luminance information. Uh, so there's all of these, so it's similar, but not exactly the same. Um, I could use this just to darken. So rather than uh, changing the color of the sky, maybe I just wanna darken that area or brighten it, that kind of thing, use it more as a lightning and that kind of thing. And there's lightning as well. And you have things like your subtracts and inverts. So I just inverted kind of my color space. And that. So all these different color modes. Uh, one thing I do want to show that I use a lot is uh, mosaic and blur. So if I do blur, it's just blurring those specific regions. And I'll use the paint effect. So I'm over here on the left on, in my effects palette. I'll use the paint effect instead of like the blur or mosaic effect or spot color effect, because if I change my mind, so especially uh, clearly in this scene, I'm, this is going more for color, but if I needed to blur the, a face or you change your mind, you wanna do like the a mosaic, you could switch that up. So now I'm just mosaicing out part of the screen. It's all based on this um, magic mask that I set up. Okay, so draw your shape, take out the opacity or go to the outline, you can turn off outline as well. And then, change your color, sample your color, tweak it, make your adjustments, okay? Uh, you just want it hopefully to be an isolated in a region of the screen because it is based on sample color, not shape by default. Okay, so speaking of modes and drawing and that kind of thing, the goal here is again to kind of change the sky and this time I'm gonna do it manually. And there's a couple of approaches to this. Um, one, I could try to kind of follow the outline of these mountains with my poly tool. Okay. And what I want to show is that, let me just zoom out just a little bit here. So I'm going to hit Command K, Control K, and Windows. And uh, this is where having a nice big screen will be super helpful. So this is going to be a little small, but we'll get there. So if I do need to kind of follow the shape of those mountains, I'll start my square here. And then I'm just gonna kind of roughly, I'm just doing a click and a drag. We talked about Bezier. I had a lovely little graphic that you could grab from like a coloring book basically last time, outlining this. I am not someone who draws. It is not a skill of mine, but I can trace pretty easily. And this is pretty forgiving. So if I needed it to kind of follow that line, I can get that pretty easily. And I'm just double clicking to switch between the selection tool and the reshape tool. And then I can fine tune all these. Um, but I can all, and so then I can just change my mode. So like one that's good for something like this might actually be, and you may not have to do as much drawing as I did, uh, the gradient mode. And what's nice about gradient is it goes from the solid color to transparent. So right now you can see there's an angle in here. And in fact, every mode you choose has a parameter. So solid has opacity, 
which this does too, but in addition has an angle. So I'm just gonna click the slider here and I'm gonna type 90. I'm gonna put this on a 90 degree angle. So it's just gonna kind of fade into whatever color I choose. And in this case, I'm just gonna kind of change the hue here. And then I can always change the opacities, especially if you're trying to create some sort of a blend. Um, you can get that. And it does follow those mountains pretty well, okay? Um, most of the time I start with kind of a basic shape. So I just clicked my shape and then hit the delete key on my keyboard backspace on Windows. And this time, let me just see them out a little bit here. This time, I'm just gonna use it with a rectangle to show how easy it is to manipulate a gradient. So it's already in gradient and you can see, uh, let me zoom back out here. You can see that I can blend in pretty well into those mountains and just adjust where my shape is to kind of set that fall off, okay? Um, the sky's really helping me out. So if you're thinking, oh man, I absolutely have to trace around these mountains, give us a simple shape a go, uh, save some time. You may be able to get away with it, okay? So hopefully that helps. So gradients I use a lot. I use like the blurs, your mosaics, uh salad maybe not um another one i use a lot is a race which is going to answer a second question that came in last session how to create a vignette and depending on the type of vignette i need i actually will sometimes just come into the transition category and use like a shape wipe like an ellipse or a circle and play around with that but if i need more control i actually use the paint effect so I'm gonna go back to filters here over in the effects palette, image category and paint. The reason I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use a feature that I think is super underutilized and I use constantly, and that's the erase mode. And erase erases in any area that it shows up. For example, if I create a circle here and then I choose erase, I'm gonna punch through the sky. Well, if I have multiple shapes, it's gonna punch through all of those. So I'm gonna create a vignette and then within a race, but I don't want it to erase my sky color because it's looking pretty perfect dystopian purple here. So instead I'm gonna nest a paint effect on top. So you can nest paint effects together. Uh, so I'm gonna option, hold down my option, alt on windows, double click in my case, cause I'm in effects mode already and my segment selected. And to start my vignette, I'm going to zoom out a bit and I'm gonna start with a rectangle again. Okay. And then um, I'm gonna choose my color for my frame and I'm gonna just keep it super simple and take out the saturation and luminance. But you can do, I'll see like dark blues, you'll see all kinds of creativity with the vignette. So choose your color. And then to get this going, I'm gonna create an erase object. So I'm gonna grab my oval tool and draw. Okay. And then um, I am gonna add some feathering and you can't see anything yet, but it's always good just to add some feathering. And vignettes, this is where the control is gonna come in that you don't get if you use the shape wipe. The shape wipe's super fast, but this gives you more control. Okay, so then I'm gonna hit erase okay so notice i still see my sky and the reason for that i'm having a hard time clicking here is because i nested this all right so then i can reshape this um so you can kind of see it if i click away here there's a vignette in there so you can make it as dramatic or um, subtle as you as you want. And you get this great thing bias for feathering, which can bring more of it into the shape and out of the shape. So it's an additional tool for sizing. And then I can really go to town here. And there we go. So a race object, and then you can create a whole variety of vignettes. And you can drag and drop this to a bin and save it. So if you need it for the future. Um, I'm gonna skip that because the uh, time tends to fly in these sessions, but just an idea for you. Okay, so a race. I mentioned that I use that quite a bit and so I'm gonna use that on actually, let's zoom back in here so you guys hopefully can see this. I'm just gonna scrub through the shot 
And it's an elevator door opening, reviewing, revealing our hero in an action film that we use in class. And his face is a little dark, so that's the comment. Um, now, if I had time, I'd probably polish a uh, shape around his face, but because I'm horrible at drawing and we're short on time, I'm just gonna use an oval, but you're gonna see that the oval is gonna work out okay. So basic shape. So first I'm gonna apply my paint and then I'm gonna go to the spot where he's kind of first, his face is fully revealed from the door. And I'm just gonna grab the oval and draw his, around his face. Mm -hmm. And we'll give it some feathering, which is gonna help out. Mm -hmm. So feathering can definitely help out. And then this bias, you can see kind of something like that. So there we go. All right. So there's all these color modes, okay? Which if you have the symphony option for Media Composer, um, you get something simpler right in the color workspace that works very similarly that we did in a session last year. But at the bottom, I can adjust various colors, luma ranges, that kind of thing, color gain, change colors, match colors, all of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose luma range for my mode. And what that gives me is my lights, my darks and my gamma. So for this, and I'm gonna exaggerate this. You guys will see the effect better than I'm gonna do. All right. So this is definitely not my reel for how good I am at brightening faces, but it's bright. It definitely stands out. Maybe he's an alien, maybe he's uh, color that maybe he's from another planet. But as I scrub through, you'll see, oh no, the lightning's on the door because we're doing this literally on the cliff itself. So an erase object is gonna help to solve this. Because I don't wanna, if anything, in a situation like this, if I can avoid it, I don't wanna really keep it in this shape because you're gonna see it. The, as you add points and that kind of thing, you're gonna see it. This is very conveniently a not lovely line, okay? So what I'm gonna do is start off by just mapping out my keyboard, my keyframes. So it starts to open here. So it's a little bit into the effect. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna find the spot where it's past its face, which is basically where I was drawing. And it's pretty much there. And I'm gonna add another keyframe there. Okay, now you don't have advanced keyframing in the paint effect. So it does take a little bit of planning. And if you've been on Media Composer at all, back in the classic vintage days, you're used to this. If you're coming from another software, it does take a little, a minute to plan out. So you really, in a, the paint effect, really need to plan out your keyframing and when you animate objects and that kind of thing. Okay, so the start frame. So now what I'm gonna do is zoom back out. Just hit Command K, Control K on Windows. And I'm gonna create my erase shape. And lovely rectangle. Okay, and I am gonna move my rectangle close to the edge. So hopefully the evenness, velocity of the elevator door will open. I won't need too many keyframes. Okay, so then instead of loom arrange, I'm gonna erase. Oh, there it's gone. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the shape at the first two keyframes. So I'm selecting both of them, holding down my shift key. And then, I have to grab the last keyframe and the second to last keyframe because this gets both of those. So keyframe management might take a minute. So if I'm managing correctly, you guys will have a reference if you wanna watch the replay later. Okay, so there we go. And then when I scrub through, you can see I'm not seeing that object. Now the door does get a little ahead, which I could nitpick, but I'm gonna go ahead and play it because if it's fast enough, um, nobody will notice, well, except for those people who watch everything frame by frame and then um, harass us online, but we don't care about them. There we go, okay? So then uh, he moves, it's like, dang it. Um, all I have to do is find the spot where he starts to move and add a keyframe. And then I'll go to the spot where he, Done, pretty much done moving there. I'm gonna add another keyframe. Hold down my shift key here. And then click this shape and move it over. Okay, so um, obviously it's super bright. 
but hopefully you guys get the mechanics of this and can see it clearly. I will not be putting this on my reel, but there you go. So it needs a little bit of tweaking, especially because I used an oval, but overall, uh, we've got it. Yeah, there's a little bit of a spot here. So just a little bit of extra keyframing will clean all that up. But erase objects is so much easier than trying to finagle your shape around this edge. Um, I Yes, I've seen many students try it that way. Um, and if you do it the way I just showed, you'll have the effect on much faster. Okay, uh, next example. Uh, I got two more here. I know I'll get this one done. Uh, the next one, maybe not. So it's a, it's a shot from a film and this purse comes into view and the one challenge is the classic, the prop wasn't removed before the next take, okay? Or maybe it's, um, so we all know those. So uh, when we want the floor clean, luckily this stray pill is small. So I'm actually gonna be able to erase it with another mode. Or if I want to duplicate them, I can populate the section of the floor with these. So once again, I'm going to go into the paint effect. Okay. Oh, um, actually, I'm going to undo. Command Z, Control Z. Uh, for this one, I don't need it after the purse hits the floor. So this, I chose this example because I can frame by frame here, find the last frame. Um, only apply the paint effect to a portion of the shot. So I'm going to turn off V2 and A1 here, and I'm gonna do a quick add edit, okay? So that's gonna save some troubleshooting. And then I'm gonna apply my paint effect just to this section. So now it's just that portion until basically the purse is coming into the screen. Okay, so then I'm gonna draw my shape. Right, I can zoom in on this one. All right, around this, okay. Now you can use outline path mode to help you fine tune where your shape is and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna feather just a, just a touch. All right, so there we go. All right, so here's the one mistake with clone that I see for trying to erase. Now, if I'm trying to populate the floor with the more pills, um, I can, well, this region, all I have to do is switch to clone. And then when I move this, I'm actually cloning pills. So now I have two on the floor, okay? Um, it'd take a little bit of keyframing. As you can see, it's disappearing because of the camera movement, it's off, off screen. So I'd have to play around with that. But what I wanna do is hide this one. So I just deleted my shape and I go back to solid. Again, lovely circle, feeling good about that, or you draw it, trace it. Okay, then I have to clone, choose what I wanna clone. So I'm just gonna go off to the side a little bit here, then turn on clone. So you're sampling for another part of the screen. All right, so again, this is kind of a fix. Is it a perfect fix? Maybe not. Okay, so it shifts off. So I'm just gonna go to my last keyframe and move it back into place. And then hopefully, let's go to search record mode here. There we go, we erased it. So if you have little lines or that kind of thing or an object, if you have something major uh, that's gonna require some like rotoscoping and that kind of thing, you might consider going to another application, but for removing things, you could see it worked out. Now I'm just going frame by frame here, worked out well. Okay, so the key to success with cloning, actually, let me go to my FX workspace, uh, is to uh, first draw the shape, create your offset, move the solid off to the side, then turn on clone. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna reset my workspace here. I'm on 2021.6. So whenever I go into effects mode, it remembers my last state, which there's settings on that. That'll probably be a session that'll come up, some of the newer features. Okay, one more start of an example. Uh, this brings me back to last session. 
And um, it, let me turn off my mat, target mask here. All right, last session, I drew this lovely S with a paint tool. As I used the paintbrush, drew this S, showed that I cannot draw whatsoever. Um, and then I started setting up, uh, showing that this session, I'll show you how to draw clean letters, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. So first of all, I'm gonna draw, delete my not awesome stuff. So you wanna use a matte key for this, not title or plus. It doesn't really work with title or plus to get the full effect. Um, scripted text works best. You wanna work with text that um, you don't have to pick up your pen if you can. Um, also, if you are going to do multiple letters like this, I'm probably gonna get the S and that's it. Uh, then you may consider doing a paint effect for each letter. But here's how this works. I already have my Mac key. I just typed out Sun in Photoshop and imported it. It doesn't have to be Photoshop. It could be any program where you can do text and an alpha channel. I'm in my effects workspace. I'm just gonna double click to go into an expanded nest. And here's my base layer, which is the blue. And then here's the mat, which is locked. On the base layer, so this is the blue, I'm gonna add the paint effect, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is grab the brush tool and I'm just gonna trace the S. You can see already, and I'm just using the blue for a guide, eventually this will be gone. But you can see I am not awesome. But notice as soon as I do that, let go, it looks a lot cleaner. And then I can maybe come in, do a little bit of size here. Oh, big mistake that I pointed out last time. Uh, I should attend my own session. Notice I'm doing size and nothing's happening. That's because the brush tool is the one tool that doesn't go to the selection tool when it's done. That's one of my feature requests forever is always go to the selection tool so I don't get caught like I just did. So if you guys made that mistake, you're not alone. There we go. So I just increased it, it's fully hidden. So then I'm gonna draw this on. Uh, so let's give it, yeah, 13 frames is perfect. And then I'm gonna go back to here and then I'm going to select my shape again and set my path to zero. Okay, so essentially right now then what's gonna happen is the red's gonna come over the blue, okay? Once I get all my, which I don't want, I want it to come on from nowhere, right? Like I'm awesome at drawing. Um, so when you're done with all your characters, which by the way, if I draw the U, for example, <laughs> this is why I always have to do it this way. Um, it's on screen. So you also have to take off like the path for this as well. All right, and then you have to offset your keyframes or do separate effects. Okay, so I'd have to come back to the beginning here and make sure that my U, there's no path for it. And keep it turned off until I need it. Otherwise, now these are like drawing simultaneously. Okay, so you'll have to totally offset it. And the fix for that, if you have separate characters, really is to do separate effects, nest them together with your option double click. So because of time, I'm just gonna do the S because I'm pretty sure I'm way over now, but I'm making it worth it, hopefully. I'm gonna go ahead and just step in. So I did the double click to collapse. This is easier to see if I do a standard step in from the bottom of my timeline. There's the mat that's creating the shape and there's the blue with my lovely S. I'm gonna step into that. So I'm gonna step into my paint effect Here's this, this was just a guide. When you're all done, everything's animating perfectly, you're going to lift this out. So I'm gonna do a mark clip and then I'm gonna do a weight lifter. So now this is empty, all right? Cause it was just a guide. There's my paint effect, okay? And then when I step out, I'm no longer seeing, uh, let me go to shift Y here to get into effects now. The blue, it's just, I'm really good at painting on character, on letters, really clean, perfect, okay? So then I would, of course I deleted my guide now, but once my, before I delete my guide, this is where I would option, double click another paint effect, trace my U, option, double click, paint effect, trace the um, N, and then I just make sure for each of these, 
that the keyframe, so this keyframing would be here for the U, it probably my keyframes would be, you know, after that. It's kind of giving you guys that pattern. And then the last one would be even later, and then they all come on. But yeah, trying to do it in one effect, it's really challenging. So nest um, you can nest paint. And with that, because I'm over, uh, hopefully it's worth being over. I'll take some questions. I just got to pop over to Zoom so I can hear questions. All right, are you there, Marianne? You can hear us? I am here, I can hear you guys. Awesome. Um, what One question that come in about, can you use the paint effect with Tyler Plus? You can, um, not in this example, because of having to, because I'm tracing over what's there. Um, and you would do the same thing with Titler Plus. The challenge is you can't get rid of the Titler. And if you play around with like opacity, that kind of thing, uh, your paint mm -hmm. ends up disappearing or your mat disappears. So I tried it. Um, maybe I need to spend a little bit more time with it but I did not, I didn't get this particular effect to do with Tyler Plus. But if you want to like spray paint something under a stencil on top of what's already there and use some modes, absolutely. Um, you can use Tyler Plus. All right, thank you. Um, one comment to comment, how do you get the squiggly S to be so perfect? <laughs> I think that was your nesting. <laughs> My my squiggly S, the one that I had before, or this one? Yes, yeah. How did how? I guess they kind of miss how you took your squiggly S over the blue S, and then it comes in so perfectly afterwards. Oh yeah, um, that was because I here it is because it's nested inside of the mat key effect. So the mat key is acting as like a stencil to cover it up. Mm -hmm. So then I added the paint effect on layer one and then um, drew it. So if I step into this and it may not, yeah, it's because of the structure here, um, it's not actually gonna show it, but it's super messy. Um, yeah, you'd see the I still have layers, right? kind of deleted. But yeah, like if I click there, I click my shape, you can see how messy it was. But it's because it's underneath, it's inside the mat key, that shape of the S is protecting it. That can be super messy. Well, let's see if we have any other questions. We'll give everyone just a moment. Um, there was a shout out about the keyframes and the cloning that you did with the pill shot. So I guess they were using a tracker. So to set it with the keyframes was definitely simplifying their life. So they were excited about that yeah. little tip you showed. So that was awesome. Um, we'll see if cool. there's any other questions coming in. I'm not seeing those right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take control of your screen really quick. Um, and we sure. will get up our next sessions here. So let's get that up. Hopefully everyone is seeing that. We have advanced tracking tips with you, uh, volume two. And then we're having improving your system performance, which I'm looking forward to that one because my system always seems to be sluggish. So I'm excited about that session and really getting uh, getting that bugs worked out of my system. Um, so let's just do one quick scan. Nope, I'm not seeing any questions. So thank you so much, Marianne. We appreciate it as always. And again, if you all have uh, sessions you'd like to see Marianne do, or even Andy do, if it's a Pro Tool sessions, drop us an email at liveonlinelearning at avid.com, and we'll see if we can get them added to the calendar. All right, so we'll let everyone go. We'll talk to you soon, Marianne. Have a good one. See ya. Thanks. Take care, everybody.